All right, example number seven. We are going to use the, 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 the power property to help us solve this one along with the one-to-one -one property. So the one-to-one -one property or the golden rule of algebra says do to one side what you do to the other. So we're going to take the log of each side or we could do natural log of each side. It doesn't really matter. Just probably base 10 or base E would be best doesn't matter. I'm going to do natural log. It's a little bit less writing. So I have the natural log of 7 to the x plus 1 power equals the natural log of 3 to the negative 2x power. I'm going to use the product property to move, no, it's the power property, the power property to move the exponents to the front as products. That's why I call it the product property because we're multiplying the logarithms times those exponents because they're just, you know, the power of power would multiply them together. So that's why I keep confusing that word product, I think. So I'm taking those exponents and I'm moving them to the front. So I've used the one-to-one -one property to take the log of each side, and then I've used the power property to move the exponents to the front as uh, coefficients, not exactly coefficients, but as a product with the logarithms. Okay, so natural log seven, that represents a number that we don't know without throwing it in our calculator and getting a big ugly decimal. So it's best to just keep it written as natural log seven, but it represents a number. So that number can be multiplied times these numbers, one of which is unknown and one of which is known. So we have x times the natural log of 7, and we have 1 times the natural log of 7. And then on this side, I probably didn't need to separate it out like this. We just have negative 2 times x times the natural log of 3. But this is three separate things, you know, the negative 2 times the x, the unknown value, times the natural log of 3, which is a number in itself, that whole thing together. So now we're trying to solve for x. This is going to feel similar to when we did inverses um, in our last test, and we had to trade x and y and solve for y. We want to solve for x, so we need all the x's on one side. So that means I'm going to take this whole thing, and I'm going to add it. So add 2x natural log of 3, so that it ends up over here. So I have x natural log 7 plus 2x natural log 3. Now here's the other thing that's happened is I'm going to take this and move it to the other side, which is going to turn that into a negative subtracted natural log 7. Okay, so x's are on one side. Anything else without an x is on the other side. This allows us to factor out the x from each of these two terms, because this is a term, x times the natural log of 7, and this is a term, 2 times x times the natural log of 3. So we're going to take those x's out of those terms by factoring them out. So natural log 7 plus 2, natural log 3, okay. Now that we've taken the x out, there's no x's in any of this stuff in parentheses. This means x times all of this, right? We could actually turn this into a number by putting it in a calculator, but then it would be an ugly decimal, so why bother? At least not right now. We will do that eventually. So right now what we can do is we can divide this piece right here that we've arrived at. So we're going to divide by this natural log 7 plus 2 natural log 3 so that it cancels on this side, but now we have it over here. Natural log 7 plus 2 natural log 3. We have now found an exact value for x. It looks really ugly, but it's an accurate exact value. There are other ways to leave this as an exact value. We could simplify this by, maybe I don't want to show you the other ways, maybe it'll just confuse you, but I just want to show you the options. We could simplify this into um, separate fractions, couldn't we? It doesn't work quite that easily because denominator is all one chunk. We can't just separate it out with different numerators. 
Hmm, okay, forget that. I was starting to try to figure out a different way we could simplify it. We're not going to worry about it. But there are other ways to make this look different than it looks right now and still have it be an accepted exact value. Let's go ahead and do an approximate value, though. If we put this into a calculator, we're going to have um, the negative of the natural log of 7, whatever that value is, and then we're going to have to divide by this whole thing and make sure you put the whole thing in parentheses for you to get an accurate answer. I highly recommend you try this out yourself in whatever calculator you're using to make sure that you're typing it in correctly into the calculator to get an appropriate answer. So I just typed in my negative natural log 7 and I got negative 1.9459101490. And then I'm going to divide that by natural log 7, which would be that 1.9459. So like the same number, sort of, but we have to actually add that to the other number before we can divide it. So that's why um, we couldn't just divide it and simplify it earlier. So now we're going to add that to 2 times the natural log of 3. So that would be adding that to 2.19722, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so then we divide this out. I'm actually going to go ahead and type the whole thing in my calculator at once now. Natural log 7, parenthesis, divide, open parenthesis, natural log 7, close parenthesis, plus 2, natural log 3, in parentheses, hit enter. I got a final answer of negative 0.46967, I don't know how many decimal places we wanted to go, I just went until it rounded nicely, because it keeps going, obviously. So this is an approximate answer. Of course, you might want to check it by plugging it back in. This, remember right here, this ugly thing was our exact answer. So frequently in units with logarithms, you need to know how to do both. You need to know how to learn, leave an answer exact, and how to find a decimal approximation.